Welcome to the Hearest Exhibition. I hope you enjoy the videos, and boy, am I glad to be here. Hi Michael, how are you today? Doing well, yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Um, this is kind of a, a new thing for you, because uh, obviously this is the last piece of uh, Hearish project and this time you're in front of the camera. Mm. Where I don't particularly like to be, by the way. <laughs> uh, well, I know, uh, that's why I'm, 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 I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we decided that it's gonna be really nice uh, and interesting to interview you as a part of the Kirish project because you're not only um, the founder and, uh, and the coordinator of the whole series, but uh, you're also Kirish. So can you please tell me, uh, why did you end up in Northern Ireland? Great question, Magic, and uh, thanks for being with us here today in uh, the Dark Horse and uh, lovely Belfast City Center. Yeah, I'm originally from a uh, town called San Leandro, California, very close to Oakland, California. Maybe people are familiar with it in the United States. Uh, not really too much to it. It's a small industrial town. Uh, uh, a lot of the character in the Bay Area is around San Leandro. San Leandro is one of those more sort of plain sort of cities, but that's that's where I'm from. How did I come to Northern Ireland? Um, in 2008, 2009, I did a study abroad program uh, at the uh, at the time it was called the University of Ulster McGee in Derry, Londonderry. Um, and that's what got me hooked on the crack and the local culture and the history. And I kind of always knew I wanted to come back and work in uh, peace building and community work in Northern Ireland. Uh, I came back um, at different times, but in 2016 permanently, I did my master's at Queen's in conflict transformation, and that's kind of what led to my work in the community sector, and I've been here ever since. Uh, and how is Northern Ireland for you so far? I love it. Like I said, um, I think, I don't know what it is. Uh, I do have some Irish blood going back, so I don't know if it's that uh, connection to the past, but the, the concept of the crack really resonates with me. Uh, I think it's quite different than how uh, we may have got on uh, in my youth in California and growing up and how we kind of speak with each other. It just, uh, it just hit front and center for me. Um, so I adapted to that quite quickly. I find the local sense of humor amazing. And the history is, though turbulent, uh, is something that um, appealed to me as well and something that I wanted to help kind of shape Northern Ireland's future. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's sort of where it began, I guess. Yeah, you mentioned about sense of humor. I think this is something that I really like about Northern Ireland. It's a very specific sense of, sense of humor, mm -hmm. sometimes very direct, uh, very dark. Uh, can be very dark. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Obviously, yeah. obviously uh, you know, we can explain that this sense of humor is coming from the difficult past. Sure. Possibly. Um, so maybe just focus on the humor. Can you tell me what is your uh, most uh, funniest uh, term uh, in uh, in Northern Irish English? Uh, well, I do particularly like Access Nye. Uh, I actually did a series on it. It was my first series on Avila Media. Um, I think it just encapsulates uh, Belfast and really Northern Ireland. Uh, uh, you know, it's something that I almost move into my daily vocabulary as well. Um, other particular sayings, like I said, uh, I, I think I've become addicted to the crack. It has become like an integral part of my personality. Um, those things certainly stand out. Um, yeah, those are the those are the two big ones. Try to think of other things or other funny things I've heard, but. Uh, for sure, those are the ones that are kind of prominent, yeah. Sure, and you said that you arrived uh, in Northern Ireland some time ago. Um, how did Northern Ireland change uh, since you moved in for the first time? So I was here in 2008, 2009. A big, big barometer for me moving anywhere is that there's good Mexican food. And I can actually say that Northern Ireland has that now. I remember when I was here in 2008, 2000, uh, when I landed in 2008, there was, there was no Mexican food. I remember actually looking it up in the phone book uh, was, uh, and then also Googling it as well. I don't know why I thought a phone book might give me more answers, but uh, there wasn't much. Uh, and then I actually came back for a short stint and lived here in 2011. Uh, and I think there was a few sort of places that had opened up in Belfast City Center, but now you've got true authentic Mexican cuisine. So that's, I think that's a barometer for growth, but really in, in all seriousness, um, you know, Northern Ireland feels like a much more international cosmopolitan place now, especially in Belfast. You know, the Cathedral Quarter wasn't really going at that time. Now, uh, you know, we're, we can enjoy uh, lovely places like the Dark Horse or the John Hewitt and places like that. Um, yeah, I think, and I think the mentality has changed as well. 
I think 2008, uh, we were shortly after the St. Andrews Agreement, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, you know, seven or eight years on from uh, the agreement, I think it's a much more um, accepting and open place, especially people in my generation. I'm pushing 35 now. A lot of people in my demographics, I think, seem to hang out with each other, intermarry, go on holidays together. And, uh, you know, uh, so I think Northern Ireland is, is thriving a, a lot more than it was in that time, even though we went through difficult economic crises and that. So um, it's a night and day. Uh, Belfast and, and really the rest of Northern Ireland is a different place than when I first came here. Yeah, I hear that you're speaking, you know, with passion about this place, right? Uh, although some of the local people might see Northern Ireland still uh, through the lens of the past, uh -huh. uh, having a very negative connotations, negative memory to, memories to this place. Uh, if you would have to actually create a commercial to promote Northern Ireland internationally, what would be the main phrase that you would use to encourage people to come here? Jeez, putting me on the spot here. Um, what would I? What is the main phrase? If you don't want to use the phrase, maybe try to explain what would be, um, in your eyes, the thing that might bring people to Northern Ireland today. I would really hi highlight that word, crack, uh, and, and you know, uh, creatively, without without boring people, uh, explain what that is through the illustrations of the video. Um, I, I that that word, I don't know. It doesn't translate. Uh, you know, I, I, we don't have a word for that growing up, good fun, good conversation and valuing that. The fact that there's a word that exudes that that part of the Irish spirit, I would say, and that part of the human spirit. Um, maybe there are words in other languages. I, I only speak the one, unfortunately, but I know in English, I can't think of something that really embodies that in the way it does in terms of the, the cultural aspects that, of that for Ireland and for Northern Ireland. So um, I think if if it was the marketing idea behind uh, trying to bring people in from abroad to Northern Ireland is that you can come and have the, the best time probably anywhere. And I really do mean that. I think a pub in this country, um, you can't find a place like that in other places. Uh, the connections you can make, meet the hospitality and the friendliness. And so I think embodying that, that spirit is really where the tourist industry should, should focus on. Yeah, that's, that's really good to hear. Um, let's basically focus on you for a moment. Um, sure. uh, you're in charge of the series, uh, but you're also in charge of uh, Avila Media. Uh, can you tell us more about the media outlet that you would like, that, that you decided to uh, set up in Northern Ireland, and what was the reason behind it? The reason behind it at first was uh, I was a budding journalist, and it's really difficult starting out as a journalist, um, trying to get your, you know, you'll knock down a thousand doors before someone wants to take your article forward. Uh, at least to get to get paid for in that sort of a way. I was writing for other local uh, outlets. Shout out to Northern Slant for all your help over the years. Uh, and I had some uh, some articles published locally, but I wanted my own platform. I wanted a place where really effectively nobody's going to tell me what to say, think or do. Uh, and it started that way and it really started as a travel blog. It was a place to vent my own feelings about the world, share some of my travel experiences, experiences living here, maybe share some of my opinions. Although I've, I kind of stray away from that now, the most part sometimes. Uh, but yeah, it started out just a, as a platform for myself. I thought, well, if I can establish that, so then maybe that will give me a platform to do other things. And then I realized, well, there's plenty of opportunities locally to avail of whatever it's grant funding or, or to use your imagination. And I really like that social enterprise model that allows you to go both towards the private and the public sectors. And so um, we started applying for projects and that's really taking our series to another level. Um, and now I think we're at a point now where we can say effectively, you know, we are a PR and digital media firm. We're here to support not just the third sector and the social economies, but the private sector as well. Uh, and so I think series after series, we're kind of building our repertoire. Uh, in your work, you uh, focus mainly on stories, but you're actually focused on um, stories of individuals living in Northern Ireland. Uh, what do you think? Is there a value uh, in hearing stories of individual people living in Northern Ireland? And if yes, can you tell us why? 100%. I keep going back to the crack. And alongside of that is storytelling, another big part of what I feel the Irish spirit is. Um, we'll, we will probably expand this series at some point to focus on local stories as well as those that have come uh, from abroad. But you know yourself, having lived here for you know, 15 plus years, that uh, uh, there is no shortage of great stories here. And that's what I want to focus on. And not just 
uh, you know, uh, people from abroad have also contributed to that over time, which was the focus of this series. But yeah, um, and uh, I think there's something in that. You know, the, the media uh, on a daily basis spews out, if I can say it honestly, a lot of garbage. Some of it's pertinent, so we do need to know what's going on in the world, but it focuses on things that I don't particularly find important or helpful. Uh, so I wanted to focus on positive stories, interesting stories, engaging stories that really bring true authentic people to life. Yeah, and uh, so now we are actually uh, able to see all the interviews as a part of the Kirish uh, project online. Uh, uh, this one was focusing on people from uh, abroad who made Northern Ireland uh, their home and basically contributing in many different ways, uh, ways to the local life, uh, local economy, local history, local tradition, culture, etc. Um, if you would actually, if you could focus on those interviews and your own life, uh, would there be like a, a, a common theme, thing or common theme that bringing all the people together and yourself as a part of the huge? I think adventure, part of it. Uh, I'm always trying to seek different perspectives. And of course, like not only living here in a different country, you're going to see things from a different perspective, but also like someone from yourself from Poland or someone from uh, parts of Africa or even we interviewed other people from the United States that have come here all have come from vastly different backgrounds, uh, vastly different experiences, vastly different cultures. And then you throw that all in a big melting uh, bag and, uh, you know, you can see what it can produce. So I think the common theme is, uh, you know, perspective and adventure and, and wanting to con continually seek what is out there in the world. I would like to kind of uh, echo what uh, uh, you just did with, with, with the series, but um, can you also tell us why Northern Ireland should focus on people from abroad? And is Northern Ireland benefiting, benefit, having uh, benefits from actually people from abroad uh, coming to this uh, uh, part of Ireland, setting up and, 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 and being part of it? I would argue it's benefiting immensely, not just the food, which I have talked about, and not just Mexican food, but all a whole range of cuisines and and uh, and uh, restaurants that have opened. Uh, obviously, I, I keep concentrating on that one subject, but uh, beyond that, yeah, and I, I go back to perspective again. Um, you know, uh, Northern Ireland, though it is, uh, it's unique. The people are unique, but uh, its situation isn't unique. There's there's conflict in history like this all around the world, and we all come with a little bit of that baggage no matter what it is and where you're from um, and I really think locals benefit from that of seeing how maybe Poland uh, would have gotten through um, the years after the Second World War and after communism for example or what different conflicts uh, in Africa may have looked like and how they've struggled to get past that uh, or just day-to-day -day stuff you know uh, people trying to make a better life for themselves and realizing that it can be made in this place I think that's pretty amazing for locals to hear. It is, that is a true story of myself, wanting to come here and make a better life. It was a choice for me. Not everybody's had that choice, but I, I'm immensely proud to be here because of that. Um, also, coming back to the Hirish story, we kind of um, interviewed people in their own natural environment. Sure. Uh, with you, we are in the pub. Uh, would you actually... Are we? <laughs> uh, would you say pub might be one of your uh, uh, natural environments when it comes to uh, living in Northern Ireland? Yeah. And if yes, why? It is the, the most natural environment. We've talked about this before off camera and like uh, we really, I, I, I know we've talked about it, how um, you really can't find a place like an Irish pub. And I, and I mean that truly and wholeheartedly. It doesn't mean there's not great places in other parts of the world, but it has its own flair, it has its own, uh, it can build its own connections, its own living thing, really. Uh, uh, you can tell I love engaging with people, no matter what their background, no matter where they come from, and I feel the pub is the one place where you're not likely to get judged uh, and you can have a great time. You know, I do think, you know, something that differs from where I'm from in California and here is most pubs or bars, if you go in California, people are pretty close off and it's difficult to have a conversation. Here it's the opposite. Um, you can pretty much chat to anybody, and I, I highly value that. Um, so basically, well, based the, uh, uh, my next question on your experience. So where we can get uh, the best pub, uh, the best uh, pint of Guinness uh, from in Belfast? Belfast, it's a close tie between two, and I know I'm echoing uh, Guinness Guru here. Shout out to uh, Guinness Guru. Um, I personally think. Uh, 
and I'm, I'm going both pre and post pandemic because some things have changed actually for me on this, but I think it's between Madden's and Biddle's, two very different pubs, uh, two of probably the best pubs, not just in Northern Ireland, but probably on this island. Um, but uh, it'll sound like I'm copying Guinness Guru, but I have to go with Biddle's on this one. I, I think they have the creamiest pint in Belfast. Uh, and my last question for, for this interview is uh, um, very simple. Can you tell us all how Irish uh, are you? Uh, you know, it's in the name of the series. Uh, I, I feel totally and completely Irish. Um, I'm proud of where I came from. Uh, I'm proud of the, the values I grew up with and the opportunities I had. I'm very grateful uh, that I, I had quite a few of them. Uh, but this has just opened the door to me to uh, another dimension, if you will. So. I'm here. I'm here. -ish. Is there anyone you would like to? Uh, is there anything you would like to say? Any any comments? Any shout outs? Any thank yous? I just want to say a huge thank you first to yourself, Magic, for all your work behind the, the camera and all your support over this project and many others. Uh, to all the uh, all the participants uh, over the project, you've all contributed in a, an amazing way, uh, and obviously uh, given us a, a good perspective on you and your lives here. Uh, and of course, I want to thank uh, Rashid, who uh, was our photographer over the series and did a great exhibition for us in March. And uh, last but not least, of course, our funders, the National Lottery Heritage Fund.